rolling out the red carpet. Just as during the last EU-China summit back in February in Beijing, the relationship between the two economic powers remains tense. Ahead of Thursday's meeting in Brussels, talk turned to China's role in saving the euro. China is happy to help as long as Europe drops its levies on Chinese imports, the anti-dumping measures. It would appear that China is holding Europe to ransom, but they don't have the upper hand just yet. The crisis in eurozone is also a problem for China, because Chinese producers need more sophisticated markets for their uh, more and more sophisticated products. Uh, of course, they can uh, invest in Africa, they can invest in South America, in Asia, in many, many places. But the uh, European market is the biggest one. Europe has overtaken the US as China's number one trade partner, which means it should listen to the EU. However, from government subsidies to ignoring intellectual property rights, the Eastern nation refuses to play by EU rules. The International Trade Committee of the European Parliament has been discussing ways of rebalancing trade between the EU and China. But many obstacles remain, as rapporteur Marielle de Sana has made clear in the debate held before concluding her report. Au fond, ça n'est pas un pays démocratique. C'est un pays dans lequel l'État peut prendre des décisions à 5 ans, 10 ans, 15 ans, 20 ans. Et on voit bien dans tous les secteurs qui sont des secteurs de pointe, qu'ils se réservent la part du gâteau, c'est-à-dire qu'ils prennent notre technologie, qu'ils prennent nos brevets, mais qu'ils ne nous ouvrent pas la porte, notamment dans ces secteurs qui sont des grands secteurs d'innovation. Cela aussi, il faudra que ça change. Desarnes' report will be voted upon during the next plenary in Strasbourg. However, with a history of ignoring the EU's rules, most recently on airlines' emissions taxes, the cat and mouse, or rather cat and dragon game, looks set to continue.